All right, so of course, um, now that we've talked about diprotic weak acids, that means that we uh, could, in principle, have buffers that are made from diprotic acid solutions. And you might have seen this in Chem 108 class, depends on who you took it with. Um, but we'll walk through a quick example here. It's really not that complicated and not much different than what you would do in a monoprotic case. You just need to consider that there are sort of uh, two individual um, henderson hasselbach equations um, that pertain to the two different steps of dissociation. So you've got the H2A that dissociates to HA minus plus H plus uh, dissociates to the final A2 minus plus H plus. And we know that that first step is dictated by uh, the first Ka and the second step is dictated by the second Ka. And so for each of those Ka's, we have uh, a separate Henderson Hasselbach with the relevant species uh, in ratio there. Um, note that both of these are equal to pH. Um, the pH for a solution is constant. I mean, by constant, I mean it's the same regardless of how you compute it. So the pH here is still the same. Uh, it just means the ratio is going to be different depending on what pH you're at in the system. In other words, both equations are always and simultaneously true. All right, the example uh, that we'll walk through is this uh, diprotic oxalic acid system. So the molecule is all the way over on the right. It's this really simple dicarboxylic. It's the simplest dicarboxylic acid. It's the stuff that um, is found in a lot of um, wild foraged plants. It gives it this really tart flavor, but too much of it can um, make you sick. So um, it's interesting, oxalis is, uh, or lamb's quarter is this stuff that you can find and you can eat, but um, it's slightly poisonous, but you often find it in, um, in salads. So uh, the example says, what volume of 0 0.800 molar potassium hydroxide uh, needs to be added to 3.38 grams oxalic acid to get a final pH of 4.50 in a half a liter vessel? Okay, so let's walk through. So we need some information to start this. Uh, I have the molecular weight of oxalic acid here. Um, that should be grams per mole. Um, and then I have the pKa values for each of the protons, the acidic protons. So this one and this one. So uh, 1.250 and 4.266. I also wrote up a couple expressions um, that uh, aren't the dissociation of the um, diprotic acid and the monoprotic version of that acid, but instead are the reaction of that diprotic acid with a strong base. Um, because in this case, we are reacting our oxalic acid that we're starting with, which I'm writing up as H2ox, uh, could just be as well be H2A, I'm just writing it so it's clear, H2ox. Um, so we have that to start with and we're reacting some amount of it with hydroxide um, until we get to a ratio of um, products that uh, is fixed in the henderson hasselbach equation by the pH 4.5. That's our goal. And so um, I'm, I wrote these up. We'll probably also use um, the, the general expressions, which would be the dissociation of these things in water. But in this case, we're actually reacting the, uh, the H2ox with base to get to our desired ratio. And so that's why I have them written up there to start with. So in green here, then I, I wrote up the actual dissociation steps of this acid. So not reacting with, with hydroxide, but just thinking about how this thing uh, relates. What are the three species that we have here? So we have the, the H2ox or the H2A, we have the Hox or the HA minus, and we have the ox or the A2 minus here. And the equilibrium uh, established between those three species is set by the constants uh, pKa1 and pKa2. And one thing that's helpful in a problem like this is to first start and think about, well, what species are going to actually be dominant uh, at pH 4.5, right? That helps us understand um, which henderson hasselbach equation is going to be operative here. So we have two of them. We have a henderson hasselbach equation that invokes um, both the H2ox and the Hox set by the pKa1, but we also have a second henderson hasselbach where we have the concentration of Hox relative to Ox2 minus set by pKa2. How do we know? Well, let's think about this for a second. So we do know that at pKa1, we know that's a unique part of the system. When pKa 
it, when the pH of the system is at pKa1, which in this case is 1.250, what we know then is that the two species in solution at that point in time are going to be equal in concentration. So we would know that H2 ox is equal to H ox minus at a pH of 1.25. We would know that as we lowered our pH, then the dominant species would be H2 ox. And as we raised our pH, then the dominant species becomes H ox minus until we get to a point where um, the pH is equal to the second pH, pKa, which is where H ox minus is equal to ox2 minus. And that's going to be at pH of 4.266, right? So, uh, and then as we move this direction in a higher pH, so we exceed pH 4.266, then the dominant species becomes ox2 minus, right? That's what we call speciation. So we're shooting for a pH of 4.50. So if we look at this, that's considerably higher than uh, the first pKa, and it's even higher than the second pKa. So what do we have in solution at that point? Well, the dominant form is going to be ox2 minus, which means there's going to be an interplay between these two species. These are the two most dominant, ox2 being the, ox two minus being the most, H ox being the second, and H2 ox being the least dominant form because we're very far away from its equilibrium. Uh, and so in terms of Henderson-Hasselbach, what we're talking about is an interplay between those two species. So that's a nice way to start the framing. So at a pH of 4.50, what we're really going to have is a mixture of H ox minus and ox2 minus with a tiny trace amount of the H2 ox. Um, so what that means, though, is we're starting actually with pure oxalic acid. So we've got everything in the form of H2 ox, but we need to get it to pH 4.5. Uh, which we already established is actually going to be mostly in the form of ox2 minus. So that means we actually need to, to convert all of the H2 ox that we're starting with. We need to get it all into the form of H ox and then a little bit more into uh, some ratio of H ox and ox. And the, and the way that we're going to do that is through this first step, right? We need to convert all of the oxalic acid, the diprotic, we need to rip one proton off so that it's all converted into H ox. Then we'll convert a little bit of the H ox so that there's a ratio of ox2 minus and H ox that's set by um, the pH uh, in the Henderson Hasselbach equation. So let's start by just imagining uh, what volume of the KOH is going to be required to convert all of the H2 ox into H ox, so stoichiometrically or stoichiometric equivalents to convert all of that. That's going to be our first step in determining that. So first step is just going to be to convert the mass of the H2 ox, the oxalic acid, into moles. So um, using the molecular weight, we can convert that to moles. So the grams go away. We're left with moles of the oxalic acid. Um, but now we need we're, what we're trying to figure out is the volume of base required to convert uh, one equivalent of the H2 ox into H ox minus. Uh, and we have the balanced chemical reaction. We wouldn't really need to write that up because we know that for every one hydroxide we add, that's going to equivalently remove one proton, which is what we're trying to do. And so uh, the relationship, the, the stoichiometric relationship here will be one mole H2 ox um, uh, is destroyed for every one mole of hydroxide. Or in other words, one mole hydroxide is required to destroy every one mole of H2 ox or convert it to that H ox minus, which is what we want to do. So we're pulling one proton off, so we need one equivalent of hydroxide that um, we can cross out. So we're in moles of hydroxide, um, and we have a, a mole per volume solution of the hydroxide. And so what we can say dimensionally here is that we have 0 0.800 moles of hydroxide in the form of KOH um, for every 1,000 mils or one liter. Uh, and that I can cross out my moles of hydroxide and now I'm in milliliters of my hydroxide solution, uh, which is what we're after. So we can solve this and I think what we get is 46.9 
three milliliter subscript in the three just to mark that as the next um, insignificant or the first insignificant digit. And rem remember, this is milliliters of the KOH solution of the 0.8 molar KOH solution uh, needed to convert uh, all of the H2 ox to H ox minus. So that's what we've got right now. We've now got everything in our solution. If we were to add that uh, to the 3.38 grams oxalic acid, now everything in our solution is in the form of H ox minus. Of course, we know that there's going to be a mixture of H ox minus and ox2 minus, and actually there's going to be a little bit more ox2 minus than there is H ox, so we're going to have to add more base to this to get to our final ratio. So the probably the easiest way to do this next step then would just be to write out that second um, step for the reaction of H ox minus with hydroxide. So if I pull this up, I remind you, remember there's two sort of equivalent steps where you can pull off one proton in each step. So now we're talking about this step two here because we want to figure out uh, how much of the H ox minus we need to react to convert the to the ox two minus such that we have that nice ratio that we want satisfied the, by the um, henderson hasselbalch equation. So uh, we use sort of a, um, a version of an ice table. It's not exactly, it's more just like a, an accounting table here. Um, but what we can do is, uh, you can either do this in units concentration, so molarity, or in moles. I think it's easier to do it in moles um, because you're having uh, a couple additions of volume. So um, if you do it by concentration here, you need to consider the total volume of the solution, uh, which is the 500 plus this addition of the KOH, um, which isn't that cumbersome, but it just requires you to do some extra work. Uh, or you can do this in terms of moles. All ice tables can be done in terms of moles or molarity. Um, and then at the end, once we've figured out how many moles of each H to ox and ox two minus, we divide by the final volume, which will, which will give us the concentration. So um, what do we put for the initial amount of HOx? Well, it's the number of moles that we have of HOx in the solution. How many moles do we have? Well, it's the same number of moles that we had of the H2ox because we converted all of the H2ox, which was the 3.38 grams uh, of oxalic acid to start with. We converted that one to one, remember? So however many moles that we started with of H2ox, that's how many we have. So um, we can figure that out just by um, computing the first part of this uh, dimensional analysis table here, so the 3.38 divided by the 90.035. So that initial number, number of moles is 0.03754. Remember, I'm working in moles in this ice table just so that if you try to do this, uh, you're not confused. I have not divided by a volume yet. Um, the amount of hydroxide initially is that uh, we're going to add some amount X. Um, we don't have any of the ox2 minus. Of course we do because if we have the HOX, then uh, then by you know definition of equilibrium we have some, but we're going to negate that and say that's fairly small, and water doesn't matter. So uh, at equilibrium, then we'll have whatever the original number of moles were minus uh, however much reacted with that X hydroxide. All that hydroxide is going to get converted to water, and so and um, all of the HOX that reacted with X is going to get converted to ox2 minus. So now all we need to do is take this and pop it into an expression for the henderson hasselbalch equation. So remember we're using the, the second form of the henderson hasselbalch equation because we're, we're working in the second uh, dissociation of the acid. So we're, we're talking about this part, uh, this second part of the, of the um, acid base speciation, so that means we needed pKa2, which is the 4.266, and our target pH was 4.5. And so that's all going to be uh, plus log concentration of base over acid. In this case, the base is the ox2 minus, which was X, divided by the, the number of moles of um, H ox, which is the 0.03754 minus X. Uh, remember, these are moles here, but it doesn't matter in a, in a henderson hasselbalch equation because the total volumes in a division operation are going to cancel anyway. So let's solve this for x. Okay, so a couple steps here. Uh, just grab this 4.266 and uh, subtracted that from the 4.5 and then uh, do 10 to that value to get rid of the log term. That's the second step. Um, 
the 10 to the 0.234 is equal to 1.714, so set that equal to x over that term. So now we can just solve for x directly. Okay, so finished out the solution here. Uh, you can check my steps here, pause the video. And take a look, we're gonna get x is equal to 0.0237 moles. Remember, I'm working in moles still because I started in moles in my IE table and in my Henderson Hasselbach, I was still working in moles. So x is in moles. So this would tell you how many moles of oxalate that you would need, the uh, OX2 minus. Okay, so uh, now we need to figure out from our original, if we go all the way back up to the original, um, we need to figure out from this original concentration of KOH solution, the 0.8 molar KOH, how many milliliters of that do we need to add to our system to convert the 0.03754 um, moles of HOX into 0.0237 moles of the OX2 minus. So I'm gonna move over to the left here. I'll write a point, oops, wrong pen, uh, 0.0237 sub one uh, moles ox to minus and we can say that for every one mole of ox to minus that takes um, one mole uh, it's going to react with uh, one mole of the uh, or it's going to require one mole of the hydroxide to generate it and we have 0 0.800 moles of the hydroxide per 1,000 milliliters, so similar structure than what we did um, right here earlier when we were determining the volume. Plug that into a calculator, it yields 29.63 milliliters of that basic solution. So now we put the two numbers together because remember we had our original uh, 46.9 uh, sub 3 milliliters of KOH. That was required to get us from the H2OX form all the way to the HOX form. Then we needed to add a little bit more uh, to get us to the right ratio that satisfied this henderson hasselbach equation, right? So now we sum these two together and that'll give us the total volume of base we needed to add. So the uh, answer I get is 76.6 milliliters of KOH. I tried to be careful with um, sig figs here. I think it was, I think it was three. Um, up until we added the two numbers and then since we added the two numbers then we keep the minimum number past the decimal both had one so it means we keep one past the decimal here so that's 76.6 mils of KOH so how would you make this uh, you know in a step-by-step -step fashion well you'd probably grab a beaker um, we're trying to make this in uh, a total of what was it 500 mils um, so I'd probably grab a 500 mil beaker I'd toss in my 3.38 grams of oxalic acid. I'd fill it up maybe 250, 300 mils of water, toss a pH probe in there, um, add the 76.6 mils of KOH. You could do this accurately with a burette, but it's probably unnecessary. You could probably just do this with a, uh, a graduated cylinder and maybe add 70, 70 mils, 75, um, and then measure the pH and then fine tune it to 4.5 with a little bit more base or a little bit of acid if you overshoot it. When you get it dialed in in the beaker, then transfer that whole thing to a uh, 500 mil volumetric, bring it up to volume, mix it up real well, and you're good to go.